The other knowledge transfer mechanism I wanted to mention was knowledge transfer partnerships. Again, hopefully this is something with which many of you are familiar. It, they grew out of the old teaching company scheme, which actually many people remember better. For me, this is a major opportunity for the materials community. Uh, in 2007, Lord, Lord Sainsbury uh, gave uh, the Technology Strategy Board the remit to double the numbers of knowledge transfer partnerships and also to look at the type of partnerships uh, that we might be able to offer. Typically, at the moment, at any one time, there are about a 1,000 such projects. So doubling, you can do the sums. It's a major opportunity. And although materials does play a reasonable role within the current portfolio, my personal view is that, that we want to see the number and fraction of materials-related projects increase. So I throw that out as a bit of a challenge. And the website for KTPs you see here. So, collaborative R&D competitions, very much a sort of major weapon in implementation of the strategy, both for materials and more widely. The competitions are all about encouraging business-led innovation. They're about bringing business and research communities together. And the overall aim is to deliver successful new products, processes, and services. And I list here the competitions which are relevant to materials technology, which have either occurred or are due to occur in about an 18-month period. So a quite a large number. And again, I draw your attention to the fact that the ones in bold, materials for energy, sustainable materials and products, and Matera Plus, are, if you like, core advanced materials programs initiated from within the advanced materials area. The others all come from either other application areas within the Technology Strategy Board, such as energy generation and supply, other technology areas, such as high-value manufacturing, or innovation platforms, such as low-impact buildings and low-carbon vehicles. So a very broad spectrum now of competitions which might not have as their core advanced materials, but where advanced materials can play a very important role. And you can see the dates that these things either occurred or are planned to occur. Some of, we, some of you will have noted that the first one actually occurred before we had a strategy. Uh, and the reason for that is because of the work of Matt UK in 2006, in fact, which through one of its working groups produced a strategic research agenda on energy materials. And that provided us really with the basis both of developing that into a main priority area within our strategy, but also to launch a competition um, in that area which would marry up well eventually with the strategic direction in which we were looking. The process for this competition which was launched in autumn 07 was actually not quite complete at the time of the last KTN annual event. So I thought it was reasonable to include it uh, just to give you a feel for the general outcomes. You can see that we uh, finally uh, decided to fund uh, 16 of the proposals and all of those proposals are, have now been converted into, into uh, pro running projects. They have a total value of just over £20 million pounds which just over 10 million comes in grant, both from the Technology Strategy Board and in this case the EPSRC, who are a major funding partner in this particular program. Just to note in passing, because of something I'll say later, quite a good success rate here. Um, if you apply for this, there was a one in four chance you were going to be successful. And we ended up with those 16 projects really covering a pretty broad range of topic areas, which was our intention. So gas turbines, fuel cells and batteries, insulation materials, renewable energy in the form of solar and tidal power, and some general projects in the area of energy generation, transmission, and distribution. So a pretty broad program now running, and obviously we're, we're looking to see how those projects progress and think about what we might do next in that particular area. 
This competition, which had its origins in our low-impact buildings innovation platform, was also launched ahead of the advanced material strategy. Um, but it's a good example of, of joined up thinking and joined up activity within the technology strategy board. And in many ways, it's an adjunct to the materials for energy competition, um, but focused very much on the construction industry and looking to improve materials and components aimed at the legislation which is due to take for, come into force in 2016 to 2019 in terms of zero carbon buildings, both new buildings and existing building stock. Now here you can see we hit the nail pretty much on the head. We had a lot of applications, but the hit rate was much lower. So we ended up, in fact, funding another seven projects uh, total value of about 3.3 million here. And you can see, again, a number of topics, um, high-efficiency windows, low-cost lightweight building systems, the use of wood in sustainable housing, and effective insulation at low cost for external wall construction. So as I say, this was an adjunct to materials for energy, um, which I think was shown to be uh, important uh, in, in the construction sector and were the kinds of, of, of topics that clearly the construction industry felt comfortable about putting in for that particular competition. In terms of um, the advanced materials area uh, specifically, uh, this has been our major competition this year sustainable materials and products, and obviously ties into that second priority area of sustainability. This competition was aimed really right across uh, the, the, the life cycle, if you like, of, of products and the materials that go into products. So we were looking at the input side, we were looking at whether you can reduce material usage, you can substitute materials which perhaps are scarce or difficult to source, etc., etc. Taking that through to the development of improved processes, less polluting, wasteful, uh, energy intensive processes, can, can we improve on these existing methods, in, including for recycling? And then at the end of life, can we design products, and again, that's that design word, design products that have extended life or which are easier to repair, reuse, or recycle. So again, a broad scope to the competition, and again, hugely oversubscribed. Um, we had some 155 expressions of interest, eventually 39 full proposals were submitted and we very recently made offers to 18 consortia for funded projects. Total value, again, of about £22 million, a grant of £11 million. Again, with EPSRC support, uh, but not to quite the same level as Materials for Energy. And again, you can see, as we had hoped and anticipated in this particular case, coverage across a very wide range of market sectors. And I won't go through them all. But again, I think that illustrates you know, the fact that sustainability, the sustainability agenda cuts right across all of the important market sectors. <coughs> Following close on the heels of sustainable materials and products, we had uh, a high value manufacturing competition uh, launched in January of this year. That is still in, in process. Uh, the full proposals are due to be submitted for those of you who are involved. A, a reminder, a week today. Um, and so, of course, I can't report back to you about the content of, 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 of those proposals or those which are going to go through for funding. But I would be very, very surprised, having seen the portfolio, if a significant fraction were not heavily materials-related. And there is clearly a very strong overlap between advanced materials technology and advanced manufacturing. And I'm sure we'll see that reflected out of this particular competition. 